Hey everybody, Ray here. You know, we all have a problem with trying to figure out what to do with scraps. Sometimes what I'll do is just grab a bunch of pretty scraps that I've got like this spalted maple here. Or I've got some really pretty quarter sawn oak and then some planar oak here. And I'll just grab those pieces and I'll make some boxes or I'll make some napkin holders. Or in this case, I'm going to make a watch box for my son-in-law. And I just make them and give them away. But it's a great way to use up scraps and wood this pretty, I just hate to waste. One of the problems that I always seem to have though is getting my 45s as nice as I want them to be and as perfect as I want them to be, as well as making sure that my edges are aligned when I'm done making the box. So what I'm going to do to help with that situation is I'm going to make myself a 45 degree sled. And that should make me a lot more efficient at making these boxes and it should make it a lot more accurate as well. If you want to see how I do that, stick around and I'm going to show you. And hey, I hope you like this video and if you do, hit that thumbs up for me, will you? I appreciate it. Okay, here are the materials you will need to make this 45 degree angle sled. I used half inch plywood, it's what I had laying around. If I had three quarter inch, I probably would have used that, but I just like to use whatever I've got in the shop. In my particular case, the space of my sled is 30 inches wide and 20 inches deep. Why? Because this was already cut to 20 inches and I thought 30 inches is wide enough. Make your own decision. How big do you need your sled to be? You might need it bigger, you might need it smaller. Make your own decision as to what size you want. Then you're gonna need runners. These runners, will fit in the slots of your table saw to keep your sled running straight and true as you go through and cut your miters. In my case, I used polypropylene. I had this plastic laying around and I cut it down to the size that I needed for the runners in my particular sled. If you don't know how to make runners for sleds, there's a whole bunch of videos out there. I advise you to go check them out because I'm not going to take you through it in this video. In those runners on the bottom side or the side that will be facing down on your table saw, you'll want to drill through and countersink because you want to make sure that your screws go all the way in and they're not going to rub against the top of your table saw. You will also need a front portion of your sled. In my case, I just used some scrap poplar that I had laying around. It's got worm holes and everything in it. It doesn't matter. It's really just there to stabilize the front of the sled. For the back part of the sled, or the push portion of the sled, what I used was three pieces of this half-inch plywood, and I laminated them together. I made it longer than I needed it to be, so when I cut off an end, I could use that end and glue it back here to the back of the sled. And what that will do is the blade's going to go through here. As long as I keep my hands outside of this box, I'm not going to cut any fingers or thumbs. And I like my fingers and thumbs. The other thing I did was soften all the edges with sandpaper, and then I came and I routed out a little bevel here in the front a chamfer as they call it. If you don't have a router, you could do that with a piece of sandpaper and a block that would work fine. The purpose of that is, as you're cutting your wood, if you get sawdust built up here, and then you put a new piece on here, and you slide it that way, the sawdust will go underneath that bevel and it won't create a situation where the sawdust piles up and it makes this not an accurate and straight cut. You'll also need some pennies, and you'll see why I'm going to use these pennies in a little bit. And you'll, of course, need screws. I used three quarter inch screws to go through and attach my runners. I used a one and five eighths inch screw to attach both the front and the back blocks that fit on the sled like that. To get my runners glued on the base of my sled here, I stacked two or, or four sets of two pennies that will make my runners sit slightly proud of my table. I did that on both sides. I put CA glue on my runners here. And I put some CA glue accelerant on the bottom side of my board. Now what I'm going to do is line this up with my fence here. Make sure my runners are where I want them. And then drop my sled down on top of those runners. 
I'll hold them down because of the accelerant. I probably only need to hold these for about 15 seconds. And it should do a pretty good job of gluing it on there. This is just going to get it sort of square. You'll square it up a little bit later as I'll show you. All right, let's give this a shot here. Yep. Now when you do that step to temporarily mount these runners to your sled, if you have some double-sided thin, you know, the paper type uh, tape, that may actually work better than the CA glue. The CA glue does not like to stick to this polypropylene, so that's why as soon as I got it out, I clamped it to make sure that it wouldn't pop off of that if I jarred it suddenly. Now I'll just put the screws in. Now once you've got your runners attached, before you go any further, get your sled back over on your table saw and make sure that it runs back and forth pretty smoothly. If you have to make adjustments, this is the time to do it. Now attaching the front part of the sled here is very straightforward. I've just held it on there with clamps. I'm going to flip it over, pre-drill, countersink, and put the screws in. So with the front board attached, it's time now to move and do the back board. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the sled over. I'm going to go ahead and drill through and countersink through this right here, through the deck, if you will, of the sled. I'm not going to drill anywhere along this back piece here. And that's because when I'm done, I will only put one screw here at the very end. And what that will allow me to do is to be able to pivot this piece to make sure that I get it exactly square with my blade. And then I can start screwing down the other pieces. I'll show you how that works. Hopefully you can see what I've done here. This is the swing edge here. So there's one screw that's holding that block on. I'll show you in a second. These will be my other mounting screws. On this side, I've put four holes really close together on this edge because this is where I will make my micro adjustments to make sure that the sled is trued up. This is the way it sits. I can swing like this to make sure that it's square. So I'm going to use a framing square to do this first pass of squaring up this fence here. So what I did was I'm using the table saw fence to line up at a 90 degree with my sled fence. And once I got that positioned where I want it, then I've clamped it down with a clamp. I'll come in here and I'll put a screw in the first hole of my adjustment area here, and then we'll make some cuts and check it for squareness. Before this next step, set your blade to 45 degrees. Now I'll note here before I make my cut is that what a lot of people do is before they get their back fence mounted, they'll go ahead and cut through the base here at a 45. I think that works. I think this way works just, just, just as well. But be aware that when you're cutting, you don't want to cut all the way through this base on this end. Otherwise, those boards will get all floppy and they'll be hard to work with. All right, we're going to run through with our initial cut here. Now to check for squareness, I'm going to make three cuts. There are lots of different ways to check for squareness. There's the five cut method, the two cut method. I'm going to use three cuts. And what I'm going to do is this will be my first cut. That will become my reference side. Then I will spin it, make a second cut. I will spin it and I will make a third cut. And then I will check the squareness where I made my third cut here and see how far out it is. That should be more than enough accuracy for baking boxes and the kinds of things that I want to do. Also, I'm using a piece of fiberboard or melamine here, whatever you call it. Uh, it's got all kinds of glues and stuff in it. I don't want to breathe this stuff, so I always try to wear my dust mask. So now what I'm going to do is check the squareness between the second and the third side of my cut. Here was cut one, that was my reference side, cut two, and now I'm at cut three. It's kind of difficult to do this, 
because you're trying to get squareness on the very edge of the 45 and it's kind of difficult so you have to be careful. But I've used, I'm using one of my best squares here. A longer one would be better, but that's okay. This is going to work fine. And then I'll check the gap at the end of this square. And what I came up with was 0.02 in terms of the gap. This is my old feeler gauge that back in the day I used to set points on a car with. So it's out 0.02. Now it's out 0.02 across eight inches this way 11 inches this way, and then my square got me down 6 inches this way. So 8 and 11 is 19, and 6 is 25. So it's out 0.02 across 25 inches, which isn't too bad, but we're going to try to get that a little more close. Now I know my pivot point screw is right here, so I'm going to start measuring where that pivot point screw is. And if I go out 24 inches, that's where I am out 0.02. So I'm going to go out to that 24 inches and I'm just going to make a little pencil mark there so I remember where that is. Now I'm going to take that feeler gauge and I'm going to put it right up against the fence where that mark is. And then I'm going to take a little piece of wood that I've kind of blunted the corner off a little bit here and I'm going to put it right against that feeler gauge, pressing it against my fence. And then I'm just going to throw a couple of brad nails in there so it won't move around. Now I can take that feeler gauge out of there. So the distance between my fence where I need to move it and this little piece of wood here is now that 0.02. Now I've put a clamp loosely in place here and I'm going to remove that screw that's holding this in. And then what I'm going to do is mark that hole because I cannot reuse that hole when I'm trying to reset this fence. Now what I will do is move that fence over right against that board that I've got held down there with those little brad nails and I will now tighten that clamp to hold this good and tight right where I set it. Now I can put this screw into one of the other holes, one of the new holes to hold the fence down. Looks like it stayed in place and we will take our clamp off and we will run that third three cut test again. I'm not going to show you how I do that, you've seen that, but I'll show you how square it comes out after the fact. So after making our adjustment and putting our square back on here, I have dropped it down to the lowest feeler gauge that I've got which is 0.010 and I can just barely get that right under, well not even, I can't really even get it in there. So it's less than 0.010 out across 20 something inches. That's certainly more accuracy than I'm going to need because I'm not going to make any boxes using this jig that are over 20 inches long. So now we have a screw in our pivot end and we have a screw in the left hand side of the fence here and we know that we are very accurate. So now we can go ahead and screw down the rest of this fence to the base of the sled. So what I did was to test how tight my miters were. I put a stop lock on here so I could make repeated cuts and cut four sides exactly the same just so I could make a little square box here. Now what I did find when I did that, and you can see this still has the tape on it where I taped them up and glued them, but what I did find that was the first time I cut it, and it's even hard to see, but there was just a tiny, tiny gap kind of on the inside here of this box. Now what that meant was that my blade needed to be adjusted very slightly. So I adjusted that blade and then came back and did another box. And you can see that these miters, they're just perfect. They join together just perfect. Now, where the sled would make a difference is, as you're cutting this way, 
you notice that my edges, those seams fit together really, really nicely. And that's where the accuracy comes from this sled. So I think this is going to help me make boxes a lot more quickly, a lot more efficiently, and a lot more accurately. This sled was not that hard to do. If you like making boxes and kind of silly things like that, or anytime you want to cut 45 degree angles, I think it's well worth your time to make one of these sleds. Hey, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit me with that thumbs up because you know I appreciate that. And it makes YouTube want to share these videos with more people. And I appreciate that too. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.